Okay, hello everyone. Uh, how's the sound? Okay, see, please say in the comments if you can hear me. Oh, good. Okay, so I'll start now. Uh, so this is, uh, it's a, a live broadcast, but actually the game was played last Thursday. It was my latest uh, tournament game. So my opponent is Cho Songjing. Um, uh, he was, he's a bit younger than myself, I think. Um, one of the top professionals in Japan. And uh, he has taken the Hoimbo tournament. He took it from Cho Chukun. And that was stopping Cho Chukun from getting, I think it was 11 straight years um, as Hoimbo. So he stopped that streak of wins for Cho Chukun. And so he was one of the top title holders for a while. And he has challenged other titles. He took some other titles also. I think Coinbo is his most, his biggest title. Uh, so this is actually a scene from the game. So I'll go back to the first move. Um, this I have black. Um, let's see. Just take a look at the chat. See if any good questions. Let's see. Not to get confused. Chats. And chess here. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so I'll just get started. Um, so yes, it, it was a game I played last last Thursday, and I had the black stones. And someone was asking. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to check the name um, about if it was my game against Adachi. Uh, that was a pretty a pretty bad game on my part. So um, it turned out that my score when I reviewed it with a computer was bad throughout the game and worse than I had thought. So that was a bit discouraging. But this was actually a fairly well-played game um, up to a certain point. So um, to get on with it, uh, this is actually an opening that I have played um, far in the past. It's um, the two, three, four points facing each other and then the large knights move Shimari. So it's a, a an opening I probably played um, more than a decade ago the first time, and I really liked it. It's a bit unusual because White has to, if White plays the, this move in the upper left corner, uh, then it's not going to happen. Then then Black would probably be playing some kind of opening like this, a kind of a Shusaku style opening. And so when White gives me the chance, sometimes I like to play this opening and just because it's a bit unusual. And it is feasible for black. Um, in modern days, you will see people diving into the three three points right now. Oh, uh, can't stop the signal says. How many players participate in the elimination stage for the Meiji? So um, it's split into three parts. So there's a C section, which is the first one to start. It's the lowest down, and you probably have to win a couple of games at least in that. Uh, it's all elimination, um, and after that starts the B section. This is actually the B section. I think it might be the second round of the B section. Um, it's the first game for me to play, so I was seated into the B section, and um, that's just because I won a game in the B section last year. But or actually, I think I lost a game in the A section. I dropped down to the B section. The final elimination is the, B, the A section, but in the case of this tournament, this is the Mason tournament. Um, it ends with a round robin league of I think it's eight players, and so you have to reduce the number further. And so there's a final, final elimination tournament, which is a bit special, um, as a, a tournament that comes after all of the normal elimination tournaments. So at this stage, there's still more than a hundred players. Um, I haven't really calculated, but it's more than a hundred players at least. Uh, Sandy Barnes is asking, where can you buy the Master versus the World book? We haven't put it out yet. I'm really sorry about that, but um, it's still in the making. Um, when it comes out, you will be able to find it at Smart Go. Let's see if I can find a link for Smart Go. Um, let's see. 
Yes. So here's a link for Smart Go. Um, it does have um, my book for Alpha. Uh, the um... oh, actually, maybe this is. Let's see. What 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 is the book that we put out? I think it does have the 60 game books. Just look up there and there's going to be an AlphaGo book um, with Chris Garlick helping me to write it. Um, there, there is a book there. I forget which one it is. Okay, so to get on with the game now. <laughs> um, yes, so I played this way. So yeah, that was a point where instead of the corner and closer, some players would be diving into the 3-3 point. That could be something like this, for instance. Um, perfectly feasible but I, I like to play the samari just because it was sort, sort of it was something i'd been doing for a while sort of since i was up there and it's it's a feasible even if you ask an ai it's going to be feasible and now i jumped into the three three point so i've started to pick on pick up on this i've started to like these three three invasions um or at least willing to try them out So yes, um, this was sort of expected. This was a point where um, Black has various moves. If I had played the curling move, I think White might have played this move, which I, I sort of like as White. Um, Black has to bump against once more if Black's going to play the local move. And the, this is a, just a little bit more crawling that Black does. In actual play, White might leave it at this point. Um, this was perfectly feasible, but um, something like this might happen. But I chose to go back to the normal Joseki, and white plays here. So I was interested to see where white would extend on the side. And alpha go to zero. That, yeah, that's with the Lee match. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. Um, and when white comes this far, the left side is really heated up. So if white had um, gone one less, maybe then I would have had time to play something like this and allow white to play one more move. And the difference is that when stuff like this happens, black still has room to extend here. So that, that black group in the upper left is not going to become weak. Whereas when white has played further here, white is actually threatening that black group. So if black plays away, now that black group is going to have trouble settling itself. So I didn't like this variation. And so I, it's time for me to protect the corner. And before I do that, since the left side is so wide open, um, I invaded here. So I think this was good. And white jumps out. And I played here. And finished off the corner. So this final move I played, uh, it's probably a kind of move that might be hard to find. It's very important to play this move also. Uh, first of all, it's creating the peep here. So I always have a peep here that I can use. It's going to make a big difference to moving out with that stone on the on the left side. And it's very important uh, primarily for the corner because if I play away, um, that's just a random move. It, if we look at the left side alone, jumping here to the side is, is one way that black can settle the group. Um, black might jump out somewhere into the center. Um, but that's not really the point, because when white plays here, that black group in the corner is really weak. And if black answers in this direction... Now, this is not a living shape. Already, if white, um, for instance, adds a stone here, with the move that white can play at the D, D16 point, the star point, um, if we call that a forcing move, then it's, it's not a living shape. So that's going to be painful. Or if black plays in this way, White also has this move, which also would be a painful variation for black. It's not really, it's not a happy shape for black. So it's really important for black to play this, um, to play this move and secure that black stone, the black group that is, and um, also making a base for black to jump out into the center. This is going to be a, a good move that I can use to jump out in the center. This this uh, knight's move into the center is also sort of relying on that, the marked stone on the left.
Okay, so a white uh, capture. And when I reviewed uh, with Katago, it was interesting to see that actually this move was not getting a good score. So after this, the game is starting to get good for black. Um, and it turns out that white should have played this, uh, sorry, played this way. Not capping. And black can get out into the center. Um, and, well, I never would have found this move. So th this is a move that came as a bit of a surprise. And it was a really uh, um, very illuminating variation for me. Because white actually does have a very good shape towards the upper left there. A nice connection with that group. And Black's group on the left side is floating, so it's going to be a uh, a weak group. It's going to be a target for White later in the game. So this is actually, I can see that it's working for White. White's group in the lower left corner also is alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is the Japanese uh, title match going on right now also. Yes. That's the Brada who's um, happy to be here. Thank you. And so... Um, so yes, so white capped, and when white does that, I actually played the peep. Um, playing this peep or not playing it, it's a difficult question. Um, because sometimes this peeping stone can increase white's territory. We call that mochikomi when it increases, when it, that stone is going to be captured, and white's territory is going to be bigger, because black has played this exchange from inside and giving white a stone on the outside. That's going to increase white's territory when white is going to get a territory in this general area. Um, so there's a negative aspect there to playing a peep here. Um, but it's not going to be 100% forcing always. So for instance, in some cases, white might be able to peep here once before connecting. But at this point in time, I would then play here and have a good shape moving out into the center. And so it's okay for white to do that now, but later on, for instance, in a position like this, if white tries to stop me normally in the center, I have this attachment here. And this is coordinating with that peeping stump. So that's, that's how the peep is working to help me get out into the center. And if white continues here, white's, white's going to fall apart in this very soon. Um, in this variation, you can see that that exchange for this black stone on the left, this stone, and the white stone at one, this exchange is being a huge profit for black. Uh, so that's what the meaning of the order of moves here is. If black had immediately done that, yeah, that's something I should probably show. If black had immediately done that, I would have been able to get out. But white's going to capture those two stones that I sacrificed. And I'll probably play here. Um, I'm not really 100% out yet. And with white has forcing moves towards the lower left corner, with, for instance, moves like this. Um, I might have some trouble creating a stable group here. Um, white still has some possibilities to attack. So it's sort of heavy. So starting with that attachment at one is not the best way to play. And it's actually better to start with the knight's move here. And if white tries to stop me, now I can play here and it's going to be much more effective. So the order of moves here is important. And the fact that I played that marked peep move first makes this possible. Because, for instance, if I had not played it and tried to do the same thing in a different order, uh, that would be this way. Then the, after I've played that exchange of one for two, Sometimes white will play here, and white black has less forcing moves. So, for instance, something like this, it would be a bit more complicated. I would not be so sure of this variation. Um, I haven't actually researched it very deeply. It looks a bit troublesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. Um, so the order of moves is important. I did... Um, it was something that troubled me a little bit, but I figured that playing this is worth it. And in the game, you'll see that it's not a complete loss even when white captures it. So white could not try to uh, close me off from the center and instead started doing stuff like this. So this makes sense. And actually, um, for instance, locally, if I play here, white's going to get this kind of exchange. It's going to be nice for white to be able to do that. And then eventually white would be 
for instance, with something like this, white would be getting the corner um, with this sequence. It would be a very nice corner for white. So that's the idea with white's this order of moves. And I countered by covering here. If white plays here, I can just take the one stone. This is not a big deal. It's not really gaining very much in this variation. Um, and so, so I'm playing on both sides. I'm alive in the corner. And actually, white's group is not really locked. So this is playable for black. But instead of doing that, white's going to play here. So this is the game move. And with this sequence, um, I can't really take in the ladder. It's a ladder for the time being. But this move, this will be a double threat. So if I finish taking the ladder, white will be able to play here and capture the whole corner. This would be just too big. Um, although I've captured the one stone in the ladder, um, Cuddle will improve the repeat. Yes, that's Rick Rubenstein asking. At this point, um, it's sort of strange. There's something very strange that happened, and um, I'll talk about that in a couple of moves. So, so it, um, it was sort of ambiguous for a while, but when I allowed Karago to um, do a lot of searches, I think it did agree with the way I'm playing here. So this would be this variation would be bad for Black. Um, even though I've captured one stone on the left, I'm not 100% alive yet, and my corner is is gone. That's white territory. So that would be painful. But if I answer on this side, um, I might might as well play on target first. If I answer on this side, white's going to capture it. And this would be bad too. I wouldn't really be getting any good shape on the outside. So white played this move. Uh, so this is where it was sort of strange. Where um, at first when I uh, researched with Katago, um, this is sort of going to be an answer to Rick's question here. So um, Rick, Rick Rubenstein was asking, did Katago approve of the peep? And I think yes. But at this point, when I was um, searching just, I think it was 1,000 to 3,000 times, um, a relatively small number, which is what I usually do. That usually gives me a good um, overview of the game and a good feel of um, how the score was fluctuating and where I should research more deeply. That's, that's how I start my um, sessions with Katago, by doing a fairly uh, fast search which gives me an overview of the game. And it was giving me a low score at this point. And it was saying that, uh, there, it seemed to be saying that there was no good local move for black. And so it was suggesting moves like the 3-3 invasion in the um, lower right corner and stuff like that. Um, and then the moment I played my next move, um, my score jumped up to over 50%. So it was something like 55% um, or something like that. And so it was not agreeing with itself. It, the moment I played this move, it gave me a better score. And then I moved back and it was giving me a bad score again um, before I played this move. And it took about something like 10,000, um, a bit more than 10,000 replays to, to, to get to agree with me. And so it was a very unusual case for me um, that it was not finding a move that I played and then it was agreeing with that move. So... Um, when I play this move, it's apparently good for black already. And that means that it probably agreed with the moves I played up to that point also. It was giving me a good um, score. Actually, it was interesting. It was saying I, uh, one move I was interested in is, instead of the peep, actually, it was suggesting this move. And this is kind of a waiting move. And depending on how white plays, maybe black's going to sacrifice the left side on a small scale. So uh, for instance, it would be something like this. Then black would have um, end game moves from both sides. So, so it would have all these end game moves and it would be relatively small and black could just sacrifice the one stone. So that would be, um, and then depending on how white follows up. So if white plays away or, or plays something like that, then black can start playing more aggressively locally. And that would be a, one and two would be a good exchange. So I was, I found that, um, I learned from that. That was an interesting move that was maybe maybe a good move. Um, but I'm, I was not going to play that way. I, and this is definitely I was going to move out. And it ended up giving me a good score. So I, I guess I, I was playing a feasible way. 
it was interesting that I had to let Karago um, do playoffs um, more than 10,000 times. Yeah, and, and when, when I get a good score for my move, it's interesting that it's like it looks like a DDQ move. It's, a, uh, it's like someone um, didn't know how to capture in a ladder or something like that. Okay, uh, the che that chess guy is asking, how does the top right enclosure affect the influence? White is building towards the center. Um, and it's probably better than having like a tight corner enclosure, like a knight's corner enclosure. Um, but it's pretty distant, so it's it's a subtle difference. Um, I find that AIs really like to play away in difficult positions. Um, when I would want to play a local move. So it's something that is very hard to uh, use in my actual games. So uh, playing this honey underneath is kind of a key move. I'm threatening some squeezes. I'm threatening the connection on the fourth line. And when white covers here, now I can play here. And the idea basically is that if I had captured the one stone immediately then white would be able to connect up on the second line. So I'm stopping that. So it's an important move to be playing uh, before I do anything. White probably should have actually played here. This would have left the game, um, the score fairly even, according to Karabo, and I would have to answer it like this, and then white could play here. In this case, white has a potential connection. So if I play on the outside, white's going to capture the one stone and connect up. That's actually a very big move. So I would not do that. I would save that black stone. By saving this black stone, I'm creating a forcing move here, and so I'll have no trouble, no problem moving out. Actually, this is more dangerous for white than it is for black. So white would not do that, but probably play some, some move towards the lower side, uh, maybe somewhere around here. This is actually okay for black. It's a, uh, Both groups are going to be weak. So uh, black has moves like this. I think actually Katago was suggesting that I connect once and do this in a variation like this. Um, yeah, but I probably wouldn't find that move. This is a very dangerous move to try, even jumping out. Um, black's group is, when we compare the black group to the white group on the side, black's group is probably a bit stronger. So this is okay for black. Um, but once I got to capture the one stone here, that's when the score got really good for me. So um, at this point, if white plays locally, white would play here. And black can actually play here. I would probably play the ko in this case and get two moves in the lower, lower right corner. For instance, something like this. And I would be satisfied with that. I've got a good position in the lower left corner, and I got two moves in return for the left side. Um, Tim, okay, that's uh, Tim Betts asking, what's the time difference for moving with the setup for 2,000, 3,000 playoffs to 10,000? It's not that big if it's just the one position. So, like, I can I can do a lot of playoffs if, I'm, if I know what position in the game I want to focus on. Um, but if I'm doing, I haven't really timed it, but if I'm doing the whole game, there's an automatic... Um, you can set it on automatic to review the whole game for you and give the scores. And so when I do that, I usually set it at a relatively low number, um, 1,000 or 3,000 usually, um, unless I know it's going to be a really tactical game that I will completely not understand. Um, I usually set, set it to 1,000 or 3,000 and just to get an overall idea of what's going on. And then I... Um, then I turn the replaying on when I get to a difficult position where I'm going to be thinking also. And of course, the computer thinks faster than me in that case. So I don't, I don't notice the time going by. So it is a, well, I think it's significant when I'm automatically doing the whole game. I think it's a significant difference in the amount of time that it takes. Um, that chess guy is asking, why are the corner moves more valuable than a side extension to 
approach move on the right side. Um, that's something that I actually would find difficult to explain. Um, I think I'm starting to understand that the corners are bigger. And so my feeling in this game was that the lower, le lower right corner was actually pretty big. And you're going to see me um, invading it later in the game. So I, I, my play sort of shows that I'm emphasizing the corner territory. And the, the AIs agree with that. that. That's the way the AIs play it also. Um, it just could be that I'm gradually understanding. It could be I'm just getting used to seeing games played like that. Um, I don't have a full logical understanding to the point that I can explain it to. When I have trouble explaining something, I think that it just indicates that I don't have complete comprehension for that part. So I, I think this would be good for black. And of course, if white cuts here, then black's going to connect up. So that would be even better for black. So that's that sort of explains why white played away here and covered me from the center. And I added a stone here. So this is a big move that connects me up. It's better than extending. Yeah, this is something that... Um, Probably obvious to uh, stronger players, but when black extends here, this is bad shape. It doesn't save. It doesn't save this stone, which is important. And also, um, white only has the one way to use the aji here. So later on, for instance, if we just assume white plays some extra moves, um, something like this, just just to make it easy for white. Let's let's give white these two moves, um, and if white then plays here and squeezes from this side. You can see that one move, that move at one is still, it's in a bad place. It's not in the best place. So when white will sometimes want to be using this squeeze from the right with two and four. And when white does that, um, hopefully not in such an effective way, but in either case, it's going to be better for black to have the stone here. And there's no problem with white wedging. Black just connects on the first one. And although black's on the first line, it's more important that black has saved this stone on, on the left side. This is going to create a forcing move here, which in turn is going to create a lot of potential for me towards the center. And I knew that. I, I actually um, had a good feeling about the game at this point. And so more important than the fact that Katago is giving me a good score, um, I was feeling about good about the game myself. So I understood that I was doing well. And, and that's something that's not always the case. I, it, the understanding of the game is not always the same as that that the computers have. So it's important that I was understanding that I was doing well, and I was actually doing well. And so I invade the 3-3 three, three point. Um, up to this point, the computer seems to be agreeing with all of my moves. Um, so this is really a good opening for me. I, I was unusually playing a good opening. Are playing an unusually open, good opening. It's, I think both, both, whether I say it that way or the other, it's probably true. Okay, so I play here, and the point here is, um, you might think that White was building thickness here by um, surrounding me here, but all of these stones they're just weak, and so White is building thinness there, and so that wall there is not going to really help White build a moyo in the center of the board. That's why the center. Um, in my human perception, also, the center is not so big um, at this point. And so that's the feeling I had. And as the game proceeds, you're going to see that I didn't really have um, a perfect game plan as to how to make use of that. So that's going to be kind of the focus of this game. The fact that this is actually a pretty useless wall that white has on the left here. Um, and that black has ways to take advantage of that. Okay, so white extended here. So this is, um, to a certain extent, white is reinforcing these weak stones on the left. So just extending there. In this case, although it's kind of an old, old-fashioned joseki, in this case, I think it was the right. It was the right. Um, I agreed with it, and I think Katago also agreed with this particular. So it's interesting that the moves we're playing, um, on the most part, uh, they were approved by by Katago. So it's a surprisingly good open. That's one of the reasons I decided to stream this game today. Um, it gets messy pretty quickly, actually. 
but um, up to this point, I think it was played fairly well. And I, I connect it. So this, this connection here inside White's territory was the whole point. It was um, the whole idea that I had is that I could use this move, threatening to capture four, four stones on the left. And then here, uh, the latter favors me. So White extends here. And I have two threats. I have the, um, the push here from the center, which is going to force White to play two more moves. Um, so let's just make a variation for that. It's going to force White to play two more moves to capture these three stones. Uh, so that's one threat, um, the relatively less dangerous one. And the other threat would be pushing from, ex escaping from the other side, which is just going to be bad for me at this point, like whatever White does. Um, that's just creating a weak group. But it is a threat that if I can connect it up to the upper left corner, this is going to be really bad for White. because. Um, so what I did was I played here. When I have a stone here, um, that threat becomes real. Um, Tim Betts is asking, have I already researched all of my pro games with AI? Um, to a certain degree. Um, definitely all of my games since AI. Uh-huh. Sandy Barnes, thank you. The link to my Patreon page. Um, it should be right here. Uh, but I don't have it. I'll just give me a second. The link to my Patreon page. Uh, so please support me at Patreon. And I can put it here. And yes, um, on Patreon, there's people who just support me. Um, and yes, yes, it is in the description too. But yeah, um, there's people who just support me. Uh, there's people who get um, SDF game records for reviews like this one I'm doing right now. And there's people who um, in the $50 tier they can get. Um, teaching games, monthly teaching games in the in the highest tier. That's what I'm doing at this point. And yeah, um, I'll be really thankful if, if you can um, support me, support my channel. Guys. So when I play here, I am looking at the attachment, um, the attachment here to, to move out. Oh, sorry. Attachment here to move out with the black group. Um, clicking on my OBS window instead of the OGS. Okay. Um, so in the actual game, White uh, protected once here. And then I played this. So so far, uh, things are going fairly well for me. Um, this is a threat against White's group on the upper side. It's not actually a big move. It's, it's bigger than the moves that White is going to play to connect up. So White answered like this. So this exchange was probably okay for me. Um, but it wasn't urgent. So actually what um, Katago was suggesting was that Black immediately move out in the center. And actually, let's see, um, it's not this way, this way, yeah. Um, and, and do stuff like this. So we're going to see, we're going to see Katago suggesting stuff like this a number of times later in the game. Oh, so at this point, maybe, yeah. I'll, I'll get to it again. So up to this point, I'm doing very well. And after this, I'm going to mess up pretty bad. <laughs> so first of all, um, I should do it now. So this is um, when I should do this and jump. And this is actually a fairly forceful move in that black is threatening to push here. And this would put a lot of pressure on white towards the lower side. And it would uh, give me inroads to the whole whole central area. So white has a choice at this point. White will have a choice of answering with something like this or pushing through. White will probably push through here. In which case, I'm going to pull back once. And it's the same threat. It's the same threat. I'm still threatening to push at, um, at J7 there. So white's probably going to push through here. 
And at this point, I have no way to save those three stones, but I'm going to play to the side. So this, uh, this sequence was the sequence that um, I had no idea that I could do. Like, I, this, was, th this did not cross my mind. Um, when I look at it now, it's a great, a great way to reduce Y center. There's still just a little bit of Aji connected, some potential with those three stones on the left. I'm talking about uh, these, these three stones here. Uh, they still have some potential. Um, I'm not going to try to save them, but I will have some options to, to use the Aji there to, to get some extra forcing. So my group in the center is probably going to have a relatively easy time living. I have a kind of a forcing move here. If I get a stone at this point, uh, White's going to have to do something about those three stones on the left. So I, I have ways to improve my, my situation in the center here. And if I live here, White's just not going to have enough why it's not going to have enough territory. Why it's not going to have, have enough room. So doing this kind of stuff was actually much more important than getting this, what looks like a big opening point. It was not so big. The sides are not so big in this game anymore. It's, it's time for me to move to the center of the board. Um, White was not alive on the side. So that's the chess, that chess guy was asking, was K-17 a forcing move, threatening to surround? Or is White completely alive locally? And that was actually a good question that I was not uh, covering. So to get back to this position, if I play another move here, so for instance, um, if I start pushing in the center, that White group is definitely, it's not alive. Uh, White could get maybe a cope. So it's really important for white to add stones connecting that group. Um, I think that Katako was suggesting something a bit more active for white. There are some cases where white could have a core or something and end up sacrificing that group and getting a big center. Um, at this point, the game is good for black. So um, the human way to continue for white is to save that group and try to get, to get, get the center anyway. White probably has to try to do um, overachieve a little bit here. So this was where I actually have started to reduce the center immediately. And I pushed through here, trying to force a bit more. This was greedy. Um, it was just, it's a problem I have sometimes. I get greedy uh, when I'm doing well, especially. I'm, I get a bit too greedy. I try to get something a bit too good. And white played away. Playing away is correct. Um, this is the, the shape move that we usually play. Um, I was seeing... I was seeing this move in the computer review. Um, if white can, but of course, black's winning in any case. Black still has a good score. Um, and the human player, I think, would generally play this move. It's just that the fact that this whole area, even when white plays that, is still so thin, it's not going to be white's territory, provided I immediately start doing something about it. Um, but I'm sort of set on that position in the upper left. And that was my mistake in this game. So I played here and here. And again, this was just too many moves in the local position. For instance, with this final move, I should have played here. And it, uh, just do the same thing. It's the same idea. Um, threatening to push at this point would be, this would be a very strong move here. And white's probably going to play pushing through. And it's the same sequence here. Um, slightly less com confident about this one, but it still looks like black has potential to, to live inside. I'd have some potential to connect up to the upper side and some potential to make some space in the center of the board. Looks like it's supposed to work, and it also looks like it would be an actual play. It could get a bit dangerous and messy. So I'm less confident about this, but um, this is the variation that gives Black a relatively good score. This is, the game is still supposed to be good for Black at this point. Yes, a living group created from seemingly from not, no, nowhere. I agree with that. And um, I was looking at those forcing moves, and it was just the timing uh, when I tried to start doing stuff with that. It was too late. I, I, I didn't start it early enough. I should start it now when there's plenty of room in the center of the board. Cut it P10. Um, 
I was thinking actually to cut it P10. Um, I wasn't going to use it directly. Um, it is something that um, can sometimes show up. I had different ways to use that weakness in my shape, which were fairly good ideas. So we'll see them in the game and I'll explain as that comes. If white were to uh, play a stone at somewhere around R7, that would make the side secure. Yes, that's uh, Leonardo de Wagner. Uh, white, that would make the side secure, but it would be inefficient for white to play a move like that. So white, when white plays, for instance, this move, the knight's move here, uh, white is actually white more than the side. White is focused on the center of the board. If white can finish this center territory, um, all that I've been saying about black having a lead here, it's it's not going to be true anymore. So if white can finish the center, even if white ends up giving part of the side to black, that's going to be good for white. So white is more focused on surrounding center than the side. Um, I think the suggested move was this one. Moves like this are just, um, they're not um, influence, influencing enough space to be worth playing at this point in the game. Yeah, so I, I sort of wasted a move here, at least one move. Um, there is a big move as far as territory is concerned, but at this point, the um, the center is a much more important issue. So when white plays here, uh, the computer still likes the game, for me, but it's a position where um, it doesn't look so good um, from the human perspective. Okay, so what should I have done? The suggested move is still going to be something like what I did before. wonder if I made a variation for that. Yeah, at this point. So I, I played this move. This is just the Tesuji move um, that sort of comes automatically for me. Um, and it, I probably shouldn't even have started from there. So, um, according to the computer, I think it's okay for me to invade the center. There's still enough space for me to live. But I wasn't seeing that, and I started with this move. This is a Tesuji, where if white plays here, uh, black can play stuff like this. This would be a success for black. Black is getting out into the center. So, actually what white should have done is white should have played here. This would have been relatively good for white. Um, if white had just closed up the center, uh, white can handle this move usually with something like this. And it will not completely fall apart. So white plays here, and I push through here. All of this was premature. So this is where I should have played here. And this is, again, I had Kadawo's help making this variation. I think um, there were a number of variations after this, but the human move would be to extend here just to get rid of all of that potential that I have in that area. And something like this would happen. And the computer thinks that I'm perfectly OK. I'm not so sure about this one. <laughs> It it looks a bit um, uh, it looks a bit messy. It's going to be dangerous. Um, white would probably come somewhere around here, and I think that AIs are generally they're pretty optimistic about how black can save these stones in a position like this, and the computers AIs are generally very good at it also. So it usually works for them but it um, quite often does not work so well for human players. So I'm not sure how this would turn out. Um, I'm getting a good score so far, um, but in actual play, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this is going to be a crash for black. Yeah. So I, um, I'm a bit, still being a bit obstinate here, trying to punish white for the bad Aji locally. And so at this point, I connect once, and this was White's mistake. So I, I was sort of going wrong here, uh, but White had a chance here to finish off the game. So for the time being, White cannot afford to give me those five stones on the upper side. So if White had played something like this to protect the center, now White's going to get the center territory, but this is going to be really big. So White cannot afford to do that. But in this timing, White can play this move. So this is perfectly timed. And if black pushes through and captures it, this is sort of like a ladder. White cannot really escape here, but white can play here. 
And this captures the six black stones in the center. So this would be obviously good for one. This, this would just capture those stumps. At no point does black really have time to play this move. White would just play on this side and capture the one stone, connecting up to the center of the board. So that would be pretty meaningless for black. Black's best move is to play here. So this is the move that I was actually planning. Uh, I had thought of this. And white can play here. White connects. So this is the move that I actually missed. And for the time being, black has to escape out into the center. And then black can curl around. Um, but the point is that in this whole exchange, white has finished the line in the center. So with this line of stones here, pretty securely connected up to this point, white has created a, um, a solid position there, which is going to be sufficiently solid that white can probably surround the center territory. So I would say that the, the right side there is probably still not quite finished, but at least white can sort of imagine a border line somewhere around here, which actually is going to be good enough for white. So this would be a good uh, uh, good variation for one. Uh, so actually, uh, that was White's chance, and when he played when he played this move, uh, he was giving me back the game. White has to save here, and um, and I played here. Actually, it's, it's still not so good for Black. Um, so you can see I'm trying to make use of the weakness of the knight shape here. Um, and instead of doing it directly, I'm trying just to play forcing moves on the outside. So um, I'd say in this position, uh, let's just go back a couple of moves. Um, my ideas were more to force white to connect up with the knight shape. So I was looking at key points like this and, and this. Before I get to that, I was playing that forcing move on the fourth line. So I think I had a pretty good idea here of what I had to do. It's just that I'm I'm trying stuff. The stuff that I'm trying in itself is probably some good ideas. Um, but I've played all this stuff on the left side. All of this, uh, all of these black stones cluttering up this area here. Uh, they were basically wasting time. Uh, they they all they're getting in my way. Um, it just gave white that much more influence towards the center. So all of that stuff was better not played. It's all garbage. <laughs> I can say that about myself, I suppose. If I said that about someone else in one of my live streams, I'd probably get in trouble. So white could have um, white could have played here. Let's see. I made a variation for white playing here. Um, and black's going to be able to escape. Black's going to be able to escape, um, but White's going to be able to probably sacrifice those three stones on the upper side, but if White gets the center territory, and we can see in this variation, this exchange is actually, it's going to turn into a bad exchange for Black. That's going to uh, expand the White territory there. This is going to be a win for White. If White just sacrifices the three, three stones in the center of the board, and White's going to close off the territory at this one. So with these center territories, um, the reason that center territories are difficult to play is because it's pretty difficult to finish them off. But when you do finish them off, they're huge. So uh, just finishing off center territories is very important. You can give away a lot of stuff. Um, so if you're interested in that, just I advise you to watch um, some of Takamiya's games. Ta Takamiya Masaki was a master at surrounding the center. Um, and some of his best games were played about 30 years ago, in the 1990s, 1980s to 1990s. I'd say. He, and you can see him just giving away side territories right and left, but he surrounds the territory and suddenly is winning the game. Uh, so that's an example of how you're supposed to surround the territory. And I should have been more quick in invading it. I, I was a bit late. Um, but White played a move here. He's trying to get rid of the bad Aji, um, trying to make me even more heavy. And when I ignored that, actually, I'm back in the game at this point. So the, the computer analysis is just it's going all over the place. Every time we play a move, uh, the winning percentage is going to change dramatically. So now it's looking good for me. 
um, and I'm not realizing it. And so I play this move. Um, I I thought of this move, and I could not decide whether this was better or this or the the tesuji is actually to play here. But of course, when Black plays here, uh, I didn't get the I don't get the the squeeze. I didn't like it because I didn't get the squeeze. Um, it's actually a better shape um, than the game. So I I could have played this. And Katago was saying that white would push through anyway. So I could have squeezed this way instead of the way I did in the game. It would have been slightly better. So to go through the variation that was actually given to me, it, black plays here once. This is going to be forcing probably. And then here. And something like this. So this, this variation would be... Um, and Katago says that the group is already alive. And it actually is probably okay because black does have have the jump at this point and has some room to make eyes like for instance this would be a, a vital point making an eye there in the center so it looks like i'm going to be okay in the center in actual play i would probably add a stone to it but kadawo says that it's okay for black to take the upper side too and it's supposed to be a winning variation for black and again i'll say that um, in actual play um both of us are um short in time we're running out of time we're going to be playing each move in a minute, and probably, uh, I think it's safe to say that we're going to be making mistakes. So who knows who's going to win, but Kado likes it for black. So this was probably the last point in this game where I had a lead. And in the game, I played this move, which was a bit vulgar. I was just playing it because I wanted to leave the potential to save these stones. And so I was playing Ataris instead of um, the net. And I played here. Pretty much close to what seems to be a good variation. Um, but white invades here. Yeah. Score fluctuating a little bit here. I managed to save these stones. And this was a point where maybe I would have still had a chance if I had played this move. I, I thought of playing here and continuing on this side. Uh, there is a potential co happening on the upper side. So for instance, if white plays here at some point, this is going to be a co-like shape. Um, which is which is potentially dangerous for black, um, but I could not afford to protect that at this point. So it would be more active to play the peep here um, at least once. Um, if white answers that peep, it's going to be a good good exchange for me. So I, I was expecting white to be doing stuff like this and like this maybe, and it would be a different game. It would be complicated in a sense. Okay. Um, so to get back to the game, I'm probably pretty close to wrapping up here. Attaching here was, that was a bad exchange. Um, but it, it didn't seem to bother the computer so much. And at this point, the game is, apparently it's pretty much finished. I think that Katoko was actually saying that I was something like four to four and a half points behind at this point. And, um, so I must have caught up a bit because it got pretty close. And so just to show you some of the moves. Yes, connecting on the right, on the second high side there was actually a pretty big move. Um, that if I had not done that, then white could have played once here to make it a much smaller move. So uh, white lost the opportunity to play that forcing move. And when I connect here on the side, the whole side is black's territory there. Um, it's probably true that I gained a little bit here, and that was where the game got really close. And there was a point where maybe it was a half point difference. Um, yeah, but White did not make any mistakes in the end game. And in general, I, I sort of have a shortage of co-threats, so I answered this way. And we're finished. So that's it for this game. And I'll just give you the result here. Let's see if I can bring up the result. Yeah, so white went one by one and a half points. I can just uh, flow through the final moves here. No decisive mistakes after this. So I think there might have been a point where there's a half point uh, loss for me, but um, I uh, it could be... Um, that could be the closest I got. I think at least half or one and a half points I was losing anyway. 
I, I saw one move towards the end where I thought I might have lost one point. But you can see I um, I do get the final move here. So the final move, um, if black doesn't do anything actually, white actually has a move here to, to make a point. Um, so like this, white can make an extra... Oh, white can't make that point, can... Oh, so white didn't have that. So yes, maybe I did lose a potential point there towards the end. Um, but I was losing the game and anyway, didn't change the result. And so, yeah, uh, that's a good question. Rick Rubenstein is asking, did I feel during the game that I'd missed my chance in the center or was only clear afterwards? Um, actually this, um, just to go back, let's see, I'm in the mainstream, so I should be able to get back to that move. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this move. Um, so um, just this sequence here. When White played this move here, I, I did see that I had played too many moves towards the upper side. And so um, both of these moves. So I, I was, at that point, I had realized that both this move and the following move here, um, they were wasted. So although I'm getting a lot of territory here, they probably combined to be a loss of one tempo or something like that. Um, I wouldn't say that they were completely wasted, so maybe they add up to being a loss of a tempo. That's pretty important. Um, and white, white is back. And would probably, I would say it's good for white at this point. At least it's going to be very difficult for me to erase that center. And black does have to erase the center to win. So if, at this point, if I had done something like, um, like the computer says, like this, or even if I had played something like this, um, it would have been good for me. And I would have realized that it was good for me. And I was seeing that during the game. So that was a good question for from Rick Rubenstein. And yes, it is true that um, it was pretty clear in this case that I messed up and I was seeing that. So that was, that was a bit annoying. It was the moves I played. That was my fault. Okay, so, oh yes. Um, Chris Davis, thank you for remembering. Um, I'm going to be going live um, on the AGA Twitch channel. So let's see, I, I even have a link for it. So yes, um, that's, uh, it's on Monday morning for me, so it's going to be Sunday night on the AGA Twitch channel. So I'll give you a link so that you can go over there and watch me um, talk with Chris Garlick about the um, the 50th game in the AlphaGo Zero versus AlphaGo Zero series. So um, for a long time now, for, for a while, we've been doing um, live streams and they I think they remain on the YouTube, AGA YouTube site also. Um, and, um, they're on the AGA Twitch channel and they're about the AlphaGo Zero games. So, um, so everyone should go and watch that too. It's going to be on, I think for most people in America, it's going to be Sunday night and starting at eight, eight o'clock in the morning. And that's UTC plus nine for, for, so that would be something like seven o'clock on the east coast of america so it's zero it's alpha go zero um versus alpha go zero it's the 50 game series only we're probably going to be going on to 55 games because there were five more games that were disclosed afterwards so i'll see you in um it's less than two days now it's a couple of days i'll see you then this was relatively short I do hope to be scheduling it eventually, but um, I'll probably be doing another live stream sometime in the middle of next month. And when I, it's still sort of difficult for me to actually schedule, but um, I will try to schedule something uh, once every couple of weeks or once a month, something like that. And and then there will probably be a monthly AGA broadcast also. And so that that broadcast will be on the AGA Twitch channel. And my broadcasts on my own will be here on my channel. So I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, this was not an international championship, but it was my, my game. I'll be doing that sometimes also. So thanks for watching. 
and see you. Thank you. And I'm finishing now.